Colanda Pelus Colandaya, Ayakapa Babala, Aika Prafa Colandaya, Hila Baba Masorianda Baba Baba, Silia Baba Balos Kerianda, pray in the Holy Ghost, everyone, pray, pray, Kaya, Nepatos Keliandaya, Hila Baba Leka Tafelus Kerandaya, Zambra da Vadolianda, Zambra da Balaya, Shake the Breaker Kerianda Balandalia. He la mama soria da baba la ya kapata falonda ya kata pelianda ai ya mama shikala ya baba mapelianda la ena kutopa can you rise can you ascend the monarch of the universe he's the one that stays on the oh my god he's calling you to ascend can you come up here can somebody come up here oh my god ya can you ascend you don't have any business at the low level. I am a mama mama. Rechete panda la kaya. Ilia baba now. Ilia baba ma. Sekra baba la daba. Raka tapa la daba. Ai kama mo. Sela ya baba baba. Ola baba ba. There's a stirring of the waters. The waters are stirred up tonight. Somebody take advantage of this water. You can jump into this third water. God is ready for you. Kalabina Sorodaya. Can you come up here? Can you ascend? Can you rise? Ele bema bebeli. Ele de 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 aga. Ele pepero mabaskia. Ai kama dolia. Sheria baba 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 baba. Sheria baba le. Ila blanda baba baba Yana bala dalia, yeke te bala da. Go ahead and pray. Oh my God, don't be left out. Something is about to break out. The hand of God is about to break out. Somebody get connected. I come and dalia, shake up bala da. The glory of God is about to be revealed. Oh my God. You need to enter. Come up, Peter. Come up, Peter. Can you ascend? They that wait upon the Lord, they shall mount up. It's time to 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 mount up. Can you mount up? I love the Bada Bada. It's Kapada Daba. You have dwelled on the low land for too long. You have settled on the low land for too long. God wants to do business with you on the mountain top. God wants to do business with you on deeper waters. Can you ascend? Don't stop. Don't stop. Can somebody climb? Yet the parada, yet the parada, Allah Baba Baba, Ayah Gada Balia, Yele Yada Baba, Shata Baba, Le Baba Baba Baba, Saila Baba, Oye Kepada, Ene Pretalia, Silia Baba La, Ina Baba Baba Baba, Ay Kavara Dala, Jala Dabanda, In Pretuska. Don't keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. Don't. Don't keep quiet. Cry unto him. Allah Baba Tiada. Allah Kete. Shira Bamalia. Ina Tuva Lava. Yeke Tebala. Sala Baba Baba. Yele Yada Baba. La Baba Baba. Ene Kete Baba. Surianda ba, ebe belianda ba, ina kuto panda la, eskete para da belia, rende belia, zame yando zali yanda ba, zada bara, ela kapala, ala da bala da, ayala zada ba, zada da, yekete para ba ba, zala ba yanda ba, wow, saga ba ya. Let your glory fill. 
will displays. Oh yeah. Oh let your glory fill this place. Ah, 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 ah. Oh let your glory fill this temple. Helicopter Soliandaba. Let your glory fill this place. Ayaba. Elohim Adonai. Let your glory fill this temple, Lord. Oh, let your glory fill this temple. Yes, Let your glory fill this temple. Let your glory fill this temple. of the universe we have appeared not unto any man but unto you thou who dwelleth in the midst of the cherubims you are exalted as head over all for unto you shall the garden of your people be thank you for this great summon in this evening is a summon unto glory, a summon unto transformation, a summon unto revival, that your grace and your purposes may find expression in our life, in our time. This moment, Lord, I ask that you have your way. Dear Holy Spirit of God, undertake for us at this moment. Let your hand be strong here. Get all the glory for yourself. That which you have said to do in our lives, we are ready, Lord. We are ready. Ever before you, we came, you have prepared something for us. Let it please you, dear Lord, to release all you have for your people. Let it please you, Lord, to meet everyone here at the point of his or her need. The glory must be returned unto you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We magnify your name. Blessed be thy holy name. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Hallelujah. I welcome you to this moment of encounter. You may do well by welcoming someone besides you. Tell him that you, you love him. Welcome that person. Go around and welcome somebody. Tell that fellow this is your time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Six. Let's take six together now. This is the generation of them that seek him. That seek thy face. Oh, Jacob, can we take it again? Can we take it again? Everyone now, one, two, go, six. Father, bless the reading of your word once again in the name of Jesus. This is our title, our theme for tonight. The generation that seeks his face. There is something God is doing at the moment. There is a particular set of people God wants to recruit for himself for this end time business. And by the message of the Lord, let me inform us that 
Anyone that you ever see making impacts, anyone that will make impacts in his generation, that impact will be on the basis of the fellow throwing the weight of God upon people. It's the weight of God that you are ready to bring to bear carbon, that you are ready to bring to bear to your generation. That's the impact. And this weight of God that you will throw to your generation depends on the strength you have assessed in the face of the Lord in the secret place. I say this weight you will throw upon your generation depends on the strength of God you have assessed personally. What you have secured from the face of God personally in the secret place. It is in that secret place that is the place of yearning. That is the place of crying out for more. That is the place where people want to be like God. That is where God does business with people in the secret place. And nobody knows God by proxy. Everyone that knew God or had anything to do mightly with God, that fellow made up his mind to search for God, to look for God. Nobody accidentally hits God, no. Anybody that wants to do great business with God, must make up his or her mind to journey with God. It's an intentional searching and seeking. And the more you search, the more you seek. That is the only way you can secure appointment with God. Because God does not just show up. He will only show up when he sees some element of seriousness with that fellow. And then, oh, he cannot do something with that fellow. Just like you can't just wake up and say, you want to go and see the president of Nigeria? I want to go. I'm going to Abuja. You enter bus, oh, fine. Go to Abuja. You may not even cross the gate. You don't have an appointment. You don't have anything. It's not like that you decided to see the president does not mean you will see the president. That's the same way. Oh. You know, some people come to our office, they want to see our bishop. Because they didn't secure appointment, there are levels, you don't just come and, the man of God has some shadows. You can't just post in and say you want to see him without. Then we'll sit you down, we we'll ask you questions, and then we'll be able to secure an interview that you came first. You have, you have, you have, you have shown a desire that you want to meet with somebody. And then they will not look for time when it will be suitable for him to meet you. In the same way that you began to look out for God, it doesn't show. It, it means that God will begin to look at it. Oh my God, this person, the, the, the moment you say, Lord, I have made up my mind, I want to look for you, I want to seek your face. And you begin that journey, that process. What you will do, what helpfulness will do, is that they will secure appointment with you. And because Hebrews 11 6 says, God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It's not a hit and run affair. Those who diligently, diligently, they begin to seek him, they begin to look at, they begin to yearn, they begin to cry out. There is an unrest in their inner man. They want to secure God. They want to see all of God. They want to experience God more than they have ever known. They want to know God more intimately, more closely than they have ever been. That will be an appointment. Because God says, you will seek me and find me. When you do what? You seek me with the whole of your heart. He will not show you. Jeremiah 33. Call upon me 
and I will show you. He will reward. Part of the reward is that he will show himself. So all I'm trying to say, first, I want to stir up your mind what we are doing here is that God wants to raise, there's a, there's a set of people that God wants to bring for himself. And this set of people, they are people that have decided to live the low valleys. They want to do business in deeper waters with the Lord. Are you with me? Are you with me? So, because God does business in deeper waters with people. Deep, call it unto deep. As you journey, that's when he will begin to, oh, he will begin to open up himself. Because God, first and foremost, wants you and I to seek his face. In fact, it's a command. In Psalms 28, the psalmist said, you said, Psalms 27 rather, 27 verse 6. Let me show you that place. That's a command. Psalm 27. Verse 8. When thou said, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I do what? Will I seek? When you said, when you said, what he's saying is, Seek ye my face. God wants you and I to seek his face. Let me announce to us, everything we ever need in life is in the face of the Lord. The things we are running around and jumping out for, they are in his face. Whatever we ever desire, whatever we ever needed to prosecute divine agenda is lying with him. You can't get it from far. And all he desires from you is to draw near, to seek his face. Seek his face ever more, ever more. Continuously seek his face. That's a command. That's his desire. He wants every one of us to look out for him. It, he hears that fellowship. He wants to express something. He wants to release something. That thing is in his face. Oh, I remember one day, the Lord spoke to me when I was once in the, the, doing my itinerant missions work. He said, ministry is face me. Face me, then I will face the people. Just like this altar. If I'm facing you now, I'm backing the Lord. If for adventure God is here. I'm using as an example, not that I'm backing God. You know? Supposing God said, face me and I will face. It means that I'm not, to face, I'm not the one that will face you. I'm not the one that will solve your matters. The more I face God, my own is to face him and he will face your life through my life. You don't get what I say? It, the more you face him, he will face things troubling your life. But what the devil wants, what the devil seeks is to disconnect us from seeking the face of God evermore. What the devil wants to achieve all the time is to draw us out. He will use every means, everything, every alluring thing to make sure that he draws you out. Meanwhile, how far you will go in this life is a function of how near you are to him. Do you know how the ship catapults? You stretch it to yourself. The more you stretch it, that's how far the thing will go. It is the more you are stretched into God. How far you will go? How far you will, you will fulfill whatever God wants you to fulfill? Depends on how near, drawing near, his own is to make you, to woo you to himself. Draw near. Face me and I will face things. So I want to start that way by letting us see and know, to know 
Anyone you see doing things, that person has known, he has found the secret of doing business in the secret place with the Lord. Face to face with the Lord. That's what God desires. And this is what God wants to raise in this generation. God wants to raise a generation of men and women whose only interest and care is his face. Even though it's not only his face that is part of his body, he has his hands. In his hands are treasure, are good things, are different things, yes. And if you come asking for his hands, oh, he will not deprive it of you. He will give you things. Most folks have come and they are grabbing things from his hands. They are not interested in his face. They are not interested in that relationship with him. They are not interested in desiring more to know him. They are not interested in... Brethren, stop running around. I have decided, I have found out that life is not about running around. I just discovered of recent that life is not a rat race. God did not call us to run any rat race. To, start to be running around as if anything was missing. You are the one that was missing and he found you. All you need is to come to him. If you seek him, is it not the same thing, Matthew 6, 33? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything. Before he got to that point, he mentioned things that the Gentiles are seeking. What to eat, what to drink, how to shelter and other things. They are the things that, but you seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Any attempt to seek other things, those things self, they will keep running. They will just like the day Peter went fishing. All the fishes disappeared. When they heard it was Peter, they, they, every, there was a, it was as if there was a whistle. They blew a whistle on your minds. Everybody, run back, run back. That guy toyed that day, toyed that day, toyed that night. He couldn't catch anything. His profession failed him. But when the Lord appeared, when Jesus showed up, when the presence of the Lord showed up, it was just one command that he gave. That command, all the fishes, all of them were struggling. Everybody, hey, everybody was struggling to, to, to carry out the assignment of the master. The master, the, their creator, has beckoned on them to enter into the network. All of them want to fulfill. Every, all the fishes were struggling because... Do you understand what I'm saying, church? What you are looking for is with him. So many things want to draw us out. But we are not called to be running around. So, I will just give, because of time, there are many things God wants to do here tonight. And I don't want to take much time. I just want to make the, the, the burden of this meeting is that there's a clear on call that God wants you to shift, shift your location. If you have been running after things, you are, you are wasting time. If your whole desire and the whole thing in your heart is not longing after him, not, not longing to know him more, not, you're not pressing to, 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 to see him, to know him more. Oh, means the devil is playing some songs which you are dancing to. There was a man in the scripture... In fact, the place we read in Psalm 24, some other translation said, this is the generation that seek your face, O Jacob. Some said the God of Jacob. And I think one of the things, reasons why some said, O Jacob, because, because of that patriarch, he pioneered the process of seeking God. I will tell you some things about Jacob as a case study. If you read through the scriptures, from Genesis 28, or before Genesis 28, you know right from time, Jacob knew God's will. He knew that God loved him and preferred him to Esau. Probably his mother told him that. He knew he was the one that the blessing of Abraham, that generational blessing, the battle will fall on him. 
He got those information. The, his own problem was that he wanted to use his own skill. He wanted to use his own hand to bring to pass the will of God. And so he was a schemer, played some gimmicks. You know how he cheated Esau? Took his birthright. And on the day the father wanted to release a blessing, he also played another kind of gimmick. Those things were not from the Lord. Yet, God loved, the, it was certain. God said, it is Jacob that I love. You can't do anything about it. May God open your eyes to see how much he loves you, you, you. That he is interested in your own life too. That he loves you and he has preferred you. And there is something he wants to bring out through your life. Just like we have different names. God wants to deal with each of us as an individual. There is something great about your life before the Lord. And when you study that, like that character, you will see the commitment of God in bringing to pass his word in the life of a man. Even though there were so many unserious, so many gimmicks around him. But God was committed. It will show you when Jesus was talking about your earthly fed parents. As evil as they are. Yet. So the comparison with earthly parents and our heavenly father. Our heavenly father is good. Believe you me, God is good. And God loves you. And God has something great. Pertaining you as an individual. Which you must believe. And somehow he's committed. But there's a point where those things will begin to speak. So this brother Jacob, he wanted to bring to pass the will of God by his own way. That's a carnal effort. And every of such carnal effort will bring a man far away. Far away from God. So when he got that blessing in Genesis 28, his father decided to set, send him to Haram. And the Bible said that just Jacob left the parents and journeyed to Paran. But Haran. When he got to a certain place called Padanara, the Bible said the sun set before him. This guy just embarked on a destiny journey. And the, the sun set. The spiritual implication is that he, he began to walk on darkness came. Why will darkness come upon him if you see it that way? That trip he was making to Padan Aram. Do you remember that it was in Haram? Or let me say, before Abraham, when he wanted to get a, a child, a wife for Isaac, he made Eliezer, his servant, to swear. To swear that he will not take Isaac back to the place God brought him out. Because the instruction God gave, leave now your people. Everything, your kindred, your family, your nation, your people, to a place. And so when it was the time of to get, ma to, to get a wife for Isaac, the servant suggested, what if I take Isaac for adventure? He said, no, the place God has brought me out, don't ever, don't take my, is somebody with me here? And so, that was the place where this guy was going. And darkness set upon him. That in that journey, God showed up. Yes. Where he slept, where he slept was an ancient altar that Abraham, the grandfather, lay. And in that night, the guy saw an open heaven. Angels were ascending and descending. And God began to speak to him that he would give him. Let me show you the scripture. Genesis chapter. I want to use this man, this brother, to draw some uh, uh, things. Yeah, Genesis uh, 28. Yeah.
Verse 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou dwellest. To thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with thee, we keep thee in all places, whither thou goest, and we bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee. And Jacob awaked out of the sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? Verse 20. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go, and give me bread to eat, and raiment to put on. This God just told him that this land, he will give it to him. He will bless him, give him everything. Jacob's response was this. If you will be with me and give me bread to eat and raiment to put on. These things Jacob asked, we are they not captured in the promise God made to him? Oh, church, oh, you are not with me. Are you with me? These things, we are, done, we are they not captured in what God just told him? You are not answering me. If you will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. So, he, he made his own vow. If you will give me bread to eat and remain to me. Does it not sound like some, what some of us are running after? Bread to eat. Bread is not bad. What to wear is not bad. Jesus mentioned them in Genesis, Matthew 6, 6, 3, 6. Take no thought of what to eat, what to drink, what to wear, shelter. Those were the things this guy mentioned. Yet God promised he was with him. And God, even though that journey is under darkness. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall not fear. Maybe that's what he's telling us. This guy, even though he was walking in that thing called darkness, God still promised I will be with you. God was still committed. He wants to bring this guy into the fullness of what he has for him. He was still looking for a landing place. And so, to cut it short, Jacob journeyed, got wives. You know how he sat 14 years for, a, for wives? Struggled. God blessed him. Even Laban confirmed that he had been blessed because of Jacob. The blessing of God was still there. Just like I said, God can still give somebody. He can, he can bless you. Oh, yes. He can give you things. But those things are not his priority. So he blessed Abraham. He blessed that guy. And one day God told him, Jacob, it's time to go back to Bethel. Bethel means the house of God. It's time to go back. Jacob began his journey back. Was trying to come back to his father's place. He remembered Esau was waiting for him. By this time, Esau has also become a mighty man with 400 men. Men of battle. What? And so, fear gripped him. This man that has labored to gather things, he got to that point in Genesis chapter 32. The Bible said, Jacob divided his lot, his servants, he divided them, divided his cattle, put one, some ahead, put some behind, put everything, and then cross river Jabbok, and then he set his wife, Leah, Rachel, and all his children, he all, he, 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 he pushed all of them, all the things he was laboring for, and years has gone, years, years. 
At this point, this guy left everything. May you not waste years gathering things you will not make use of. Gathering things that will not have eternal value. He, at that point, he realized something that he needed more. There was something missing. And the Bible said that night, Jacob was left alone. Oh, that night, Jacob was left alone. What God is trying to succeed in your life is to bring you to the point where you will be left alone. Where you will see that you are alone. It's all that matters to me. He's laboring to bring you to that point where you will not see anything but God. God alone. God alone. God alone is all I ever needed. Friends, God alone is all you ever needed. Anybody that is telling you another thing is not true. God alone. God alone. And God wants you to come to this point where you will realize that he is all that you ever needed. That he is all that you will need. That there is nothing missing in him. If he will only get you and you seek it out. That guy that night, the Bible said, and Jacob wrestled with the Lord. You must come to that point where you will, you will, you will enter into the secret place. You will make up your mind. I, I told you that God deals with us as an individual. It doesn't collective, okay. For something about your life, it will be with you. He wants a face-to-face -face affair with you. There is no married couple that ever meets together in, that, in an open space. You don't see a, a man and a woman meeting, meeting together outside. It's in the secret place. That's where intercourse happens. God wants to have something with you alone. There is something in his face that he wants to imprint upon your life. Just like a man and a woman, a man looks into the face of his wife and they are happy with each other. That's what God wants to achieve. He wants to bring you to a point of face to face where you will value him more than everything. Where you will cherish him more than all. Where nothing else matters but you, my love. You are the love of my life. It's not in singing, but in acting it. But for many people, lift up holy hands and say, you are the Lord, but their heart is not with him. So he wants to bring you to that place where you will begin to make him your all in all. Where you will see no other person but the Lord. Where you will see nothing else but God. Where you will draw from him. It is in his face that everything is lying. Moses realized a little of this. When he began to ask, Lord, I'm not going anywhere. Until you show me your face. Show me your face. I want to see your glory. Oh, that little encounter that he stayed with God. You know the result. That little encounter with God. The Bible said Moses came down. Even though that was a fading glory. But you cannot deny the impact. He came down that day. And the Bible said, and the face of Moses was what? Was shining. There was light. There was something shining coming out of his life. Can I tell somebody here? God wants your destiny to shine. God wants your life to shine. That shining effect, that shining luster can only be drawn in his face. The guy had business with God, came down and something began to shine. Something about you begin to shine. May something about you begin to shine as you draw yourself into the secret place of the Lord. You want to shine in life? Sister, you want to shine? Shining is not... You can put up many makeups. You can put on different things. Foundation, different, and it will not change your face. Nobody will see you. If you want to shine, it's in the face of the Lord. You want your business, you want your life to shine. You want your life to gain weight. It's in the, in the face of God. That's where glory is. The glory is in his face. Do you not see why he's willing us to come? So that you have a, you have a face, face to face dealing with us. Because in his face, that's where the glory lies. That's where the glory is residing. So come, face me and something will be transformed. 
You want to transform? You want to change? Jesus, when he took his disciples to the mountain, the Bible says, as he In the midst of the cherubims, shine forth. Oh my God. He who dwells in the midst of the cherubims, shine forth. Jesus began to pray. The Bible says, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance were altered. Some things began to change. Some things began to change. There was transformation. There was metamorphosis. His body, everything began to change. And it began to glister. It began to shine. He entered into another dimension. Bro, you want to enter into another dimension. Now, this is the secret. As he prayed, something was changing in him. Something was changing. As he dwelt, as you dwell, there will be a transformation. There will be a change. There will be something. Things that are working against your destiny. They can't stand in his presence. Sin, no matter the kind of weakness that has bedeviled your life, no matter the kind of thing that you are you are facing in his presence, those things are weakened. Those things have no potence again, they have no potence, no power anymore. In his presence, they melt. Mountains melt in his presence. Your own mountain will melt tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Things melt. Oh, you will see something that will melt in his presence. There was a move. There was a trans transfiguration. And the Bible said, God, who commanded light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts that he may give the, the light of the knowledge of his glory in the face of his son, Jesus. If you are looking for glory, it is in the face of Jesus. This thing is in the face, is Jesus. It's the real glory. It's Jesus. When you make up your mind that Jesus will be your first, your everything, you will see which there is no, 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 no nothing else that you can get outside Jesus. If you want to talk about the attribute of the nature of God, the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, that he is the express image of the invisible God. If you want to talk about the nature of God, Jesus is that nature. Jesus is the express image of the invisible God, the brightness of his glory. If you want to talk about his attributes, the attributes of God, God who created everything, it is Jesus. John 1, 3, the Bible says, without him, nothing was made. Ah, Jesus. Everything, oh my God, he is the, he is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It is Jesus. Whatever that is making you to journey out, it is a device of the devil. Everything is with him. If they say the whole treasures, the hidden treasures of darkness are with Jesus, then why are you going outside looking for treasures? When the whole things are lying in him, in his face. When the things you are looking for, they are all locked up in him. Are you not seeing that this is another deception? To journey, to think you can make it, you can get anything outside him. And anything that is making you not to give your full attention to him. The problem. And God is looking for this generation of men and women that will rise in these last days. And their prerogative is nothing but to see the face of God. Their whole desire, everything they are yearning for, is that we want to see your face, Lord. Something wants to break forth out of your life. And that thing is in the Lord. The more you come closer. This is the burden of this meeting. We don't want to speak big grammar or big uh, doctrinal. The issue is that God is looking for you. That God wants to have an experience with you. Listen. I had, a, I had an issue with a, a pastor. When I was in my hometown. 
because I was doing something, so he, he came along and asked me to, to help him. He had a Bible school. He was not with his wife. And he began to do some strange things. People began to tell me, ah, this man of God, this man, you know you are new here, you don't know this man. He only came to take advantage of you. I said, let me give it. And the Lord told me, tell this man, why are you laboring for a kingdom that you will not enter? Oh, I was shocked. I've not had that kind of thing. That you are laboring for a kingdom that you will not enter. And I told him, he made a jest of it. I knew it's time for me to withdraw. Later on, I heard from his wife that for eight years, more than eight years of their marriage, more than eight years, they have been married more than eight years that his husband has not met with him. They have not. They do not give you understanding. Yeah. How? Do you know? That is how God is yearning for relationship with you, his bride. Do you know that God is yearning for relationship? You are the bride of Christ and is longing for a relationship. But you are joining. The way that woman was feeling, the way that's how God is feeling. It's not about that woman, it's you. That God is waiting for you to come in, that you will be soaked in Him. That, that you, will, you will spend time, you will stay with Him, stay with Him, stay, stay. These are the days that people cannot stay on God. You can't stay for one hour, you can't stay for two hours. Something is calling our attention. The idols of these last days, oh, they are not calling for blood. In those days, they call, some still ask for blood, blood. But these modern idols, you know what they are looking for? Your attention, your time. They are not, they are not, they don't have any problem that you are serving God. They also want you to give them attention. Yes. You are in Christ. Yes, they know. They, oh, please, also give us attention. Give me some. They are looking for also attention. They are looking for time. So that thing that is looking for time, when the, you, the one who, who has paid a price to marry you, a costly price, and you are depriving him of relationship. The other time we heard of somebody that broke Guinness Book of Record. He could for how many hours? Somebody can cook, and people are commenting on. He didn't bring a body before you that, oh, I have not even broken a record in the spirit. I have not prayed for two hours stretch. I have not prayed for three hours. I have not locked in, in myself inside and prayed for six hours. Have I ever prayed for six hours? When I hear people are praying for seven hours, have I ever tried to pray for seven hours? It's not, it's not moving you. The one who, who has paid a price is calling you. He desires a relationship with him. He's with him. And there's a spirit. The spirit of God is the one that triggers the fire to woo you unto the Lord. Tonight, Somebody will catch a fresh fire. Stand to your feet. Oh, sorry. I am a masukaradaba. Oh, I am a mama suliandaya. Can you talk to the Lord? Nema muskoriandabaya. Can somebody talk to the Lord? Can you talk to him now? Can you talk to him? What has thrown you away? What are, I have many things to say, but for want of time, I need to stop. I need to stop. That's a generation. The generation of men that seek his face. Will you be enlisted as part of these men and women? This is the generation. That's a demonstrative pronoun. Meaning, signifying this is this particular group is a different set of people. This generation, this one is a different. Will you be part of these people? This different breed of men, their only delight is in God. These are men who will become something in the hands of God. These are men who will turn to mighty men, mighty men of valor, because they have drawn something in his face. Can you talk to the Lord now? Oh my God. Can you pray? Can you pray? Pray, pray, pray. Can you pray to the Lord now? I don't know what took you away. Can you talk to the Lord? I find my way back to you. On that day, Jacob was left alone. Everything he left bought for, he didn't mind them again. He, didn't, he was not interested on in those things again. What he needed was in God. And that day after that wrestling, the Bible said, God touched something in his life. And after that encounter, the name of that place was called Peniel, the face of God. 
And as he lived, went out of that day, the sun rose. Somebody's destiny, somebody's light, somebody's sun, somebody's sun will rise again. As you find him, as you journey yourself back to the place of the secret, where you will find his face again. Can you pray, Lord? Oh, oh yeah, mama, mama. Church, I want you to cry out to God. Take me to the take me to the place where you are. Take me to the place. Oh, there's a hunger in me. There's a desire in me, Lord. Take me to the place. Go, take me to the place. Take me to the place. My yeah, the place Can you talk to him? Just talk to him. In two there minutes, I'm rounding up. Two minutes, just. I want you to draw. I want you to draw. Can you connect? Can you connect back? Can you connect back to your lover? They have been waiting for a time when he will get your attention. That all you are looking for is in me. They have been patient enough following you in dark times. Following you in dark moments. Following you in every moment. He wants to get your attention. The reason why he's moving around even when you are not getting it right. There's a commitment in him. There is a Oh. I am yearning for it is, is a place where deep bones to the deep. Oh, I'm overwhelmed by this deep longing. Take me no. Saliyama makuto para dabaya. Shalaba me katalia. Limbra dos katapandalia. Elekete. One more minute. Can you pray? I want you to make sure that some, there's a connection back. Make sure that something is connecting back. If you have missed it somewhere, can you ask for mercy? Take me. Take me to the place. Oh, the place you are. Yeah, the secret place. That's, That's where I wanna, I wanna be. be. Take me. Take me to the place. Take me to the place. The place you are. The place you are. The secret place. Oh. That's where I wanna be. Take me to the place. Take me to the Can you join it back? In that place, that is where mountains melt. Come back, something will melt. Something will disappear. Your life will begin to shine. Can you draw? Say, Lord, draw me. Say, draw me, Lord. Maya, mama, 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 You are my glory. You are my sovereignty. My foundation. You are my shield. You are my shield. You are my glory. You are my sovereignty. My foundation. Take me to the place. five minutes. So, I want to pray for first. You are here. You are sensing a disconnection. You have journeyed far. And you want to be reconnected to him. 
Something has taken you away from his face. And you know you have gone far. Can you lift up your right hand? Lift up your right hand. Yes, lift up your right hand. Lift it up. All you are looking for is for a reconnection. God wants to reconnect you back. God wants to reconnect you back. Yes. Lift it up to him. Oh my God. Tell him, Lord, my hands are up to you. Reconnect me, Lord. My hands are lifted up to you, Jesus. You are one of the reasons for this meeting. He wants to reconnect you. He wants to enlist you to be part of this generation. Oh, my God. Father, behold these ones whose hands are lifted up to you. They have come back. You have been waiting for them to come. Oh, you have been waiting for them to come. Now they have come. You have succeeded in getting their attention. Therefore, Lord, take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Whatever that took you away from him, denounce it now. If he sin, repent of that sin. Oh my God. Repent. He knows. He sees you. Repent. He's waiting for you to repent. And then he will begin something fresh. My God, my God. You, as your hands are up, just come and meet me here quickly, quickly. We don't have much time. All of you whose hands are up, come quickly. Come, 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 come. All of you whose hands are up, come, come, come. God wants to reconnect. God wants to bring something up. Still lift up your hands to him. Oh my God. You didn't come before any man. You have come before your maker. Yeah, you are seeking for a reconnection. That something has taken you up. He said, seek my face. All he wants is to get your attention. It's all about you. Mean business with him now. Can you mean business? Can you mean business? With, oh my God. God means business with you. Can you mean business? You know, you are the one keeping yourself. Something wants to break out of your life that you are the one hindering. He has waited for this moment. He has waited for this moment. Can you mean business with him now? Mean business. I, I will journey no more. Not today, Lord. To, tonight. Tonight, I have returned back. I come back, Lord. Tonight. Tonight, Lord. Tonight. Tonight. I come back to you. Oh my God. I've done it far. I, I, I mean business. I have played too long. What I'm looking for is with you. Why will I be turning away? Oh my God. Oh my God. Talk to him. Talk. You are, oh, talk to him. Something will, something will melt in somebody's life now. Oh, yes, yes. There are things that would have gone out of your life for long because you are you have gone far. But that thing will end here. Ah, Sarabama Yakaba. Some of you, you have been going through, you rise, that's a, that's a besetting sin. A besetting sin. You are always, always falling into that sin. But the strength of that sin is ending. It ends in his face. Nothing su survives. Oh my God, in his face. In his face, every sinful matter comes. Oh, something is ending. Something. The hand of God is coming strong. It's coming strong upon someone here. It's coming strong. Yes. 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 Oh, Holy Ghost. They didn't come for anyone. Lift up your hands unto him. Jesus. Whatever that has disconnected these ones, they have opened to you. They didn't come to any man. You want to raise an army. Generation of God seekers. Look at them, Lord. Begin now. Begin with them. They have run for too long. They have come. You have been wooing them to come that you have something better. Better than what the enemy can have offer. Better from what the enemy can offer to them. You have succeeded in getting them. Now, dear Lord, it's time. In the name of Jesus, lift up your two hands. Father, I want to pray for you now. 
as I pray now, the hand of God will come strong upon some of you. Some things will leave you now. Some things will drop off your life. Some things holding you back. We we leave you now. Now, now, now. Oh, yes. The hand is coming. Some things will leave you now. The enemy following you around now. He can't stay now. He will leave you. On, oh my God. Holy Ghost, let your hand come strong now. Let your hand come strong. 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 These are your possessions. They have come to you. Let the hands of the enemy Let's pull them out. Be disconnected now. Yes. Yes, that allurement. That thing pulling you out. I disconnect it now. That stronghold the enemy has established to disconnect you from him. I pull it off now. Oh. Dear Lord, let your hand come upon all these ones afresh. Let your hands come upon all these ones. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Celia Baba. Holy Spirit. Some of you, you have been messing up yourself in the dream. Something has been messing you up. Contrary to your wish. Every foul spirit. Every foul spirit. Messing you up. At the count of three, I command. Lose your grip now. One. Two, three, come on. Go! Get out now. Get out of them now. Yes. Get out. This is no longer your habitation. This life is exclusively for the Lord. Now pack your loads and go and come back no more. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Woo. Everyone, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. God wants to release a fresh fire that will keep you burning for Him. You want that fresh fire to remain on fire in your pursuit of God. Is triggered by a fire. That fire. Lift up your hands if you so desire that fresh fire of God. Holy Ghost fire. Everywhere. Lord, you want to set a mark. You do you, you do it by fire. When you visit, you visit by fire. And Lord, now. I am starting from these ones in the front to the back. Everyone that desires your fire now, I ask at the count of seven, let there be a release of fire in this house. Let there be a release of fresh fire. Fresh fire. Oh my God. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Let there be a release of fresh fire now. From everywhere, Lord, in this congregation, let there be a release of, let it begin to burn inside. For out of their belly shall flow. Let something, oh my God, something that will flow out of their belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Let that living water spring forth now. Ah, my God, ah, at the count of seven, one. I am a mashikarababa. Le pretefe to school. Two. Sianaba. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Something is coming upon you. Three. I am a natala. Four. Yes, five. Oh, it's coming. It's coming strong. Holy Ghost is coming stronger. Are you ready? Six, yes. Oh, take it. Take it. Take it. Take it by fire. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Seven, take it. Let it flow. Holy Ghost. Begin it, yes. Begin it. Begin it, yes. Let fire flow. Touch them a flesh, yes. Woo! It's burning. Let brother Everywhere, get the fire now. Yes, I see the garment of fire. God, clothing people with fire, clothe them with fire now. Secure your possession, Lord, with fire. Secure your lot. Ah! Secure your lot. Keep praying. Secure 
Secure your lot. Secure your lot. Secure your lot. The fire is still coming. The hand of God is coming. He wants to secure his possession by fire. Secure your possession. Every strange spirit, come on to wherever you are. Let the fire of God come up fresh. Because you have appeared in his presence, that veil is taken away. That covering that makes you hidden. Hidden, you are existing but hidden. Tonight, Holy Ghost, take away that veil. Take away that covering. Take away that covering now. Take away, yes, take, take it away. Take whatever that has hindered you from assessing the greatness of life. Whatever that has made your life not to shine, let the shining in faith be ignited now. Your destinies begin to shine. Begins to shine. Begins to shine. Somebody's life is about to shine. Oh my God. Shining, shining. Very shining. Nothing survives in his presence. Nothing stands in his presence. Not even sickness. Oh, no sickness survives his presence. Yes. If you are sick in any part of your body, lay your hands on that place now. The healing virtues are here. Whatever type of ailment, your eyes are paining you, put your hands out there. You have one eye defect, whatever challenge, whatever pain in your stomach, everything that has been troubling your destiny. They cannot survive this presence. In his face, everything melts. Oh. The hand of God is about to move. With healing in his wings. God is moving already. God is moving out. Oh my God. Some things are moving out. When you are here. Ah. When you are here. Ah. Something is moving out already. I see stones melting. Hey. Because he's here. Nothing is impossible. In the atmosphere of his presence. In the atmosphere of Jesus. Nothing is impossible. This is a moment of possibilities. Oh my God. In the atmosphere of Jesus. Now, keep quiet now. Keep quiet. Some of you, your marriages have been blocked. But God has opened the door. Hey, God has, oh my God. God just opened the door where somebody has been kept. Jesus, Jesus. Put your hand up, please. Blah, 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 blah. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Your, your, your womb will begin to sense the fire of God now. Yes. Your womb, your womb, your womb. That womb will begin to say, Oh my God. Because God has been waiting for you. And he's here already. The healer. The Lord that healed thee. Come unto me, all you that are labored. Now heavy laden. Whatever load, whatever pain, whatever sickness, he said he will carry it. He himself bore our infirmities. He bore the infirmities so that you will not bear them. So everything that you are bearing is a stranger because you have come to his presence. They must go there. 
Jesus, it's time to get glory for yourself. Oh my God, thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus. When I finish praying, we will shout Jesus seven times. Then begin to check yourself. Some things will melt away at the seventh time. And then, when your own melts, celebrate God. They will not come back again. Lord, I take authority now in your name against every foul spirit, every unclean spirit under the sound of my voice, every spirit of infirmities and disease lying in anybody here. They are strangers and it is written, strangers shall hear my voice and they shall come out of their close places. You spirit of infirmities, you sickness, Jesus took care of you on the cross. You have no right to remain in these bodies. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I command you now, every trace of sickness, whatever sickness or disease that has a name, I command you, in the name above all the name, the name Jesus, come out! Come out! Whatever pain in your body, I command it to come to an end now. Every pain, every yoke of sickness be destroyed now by the anointing in the name of Jesus. Whatever sickness that has lingered, whatever that has deferred medical solution, every contrary report, every womb closed, tonight, I command you, open! Womb, open! Now, now, in the name of Jesus! Every disease, every infectious disease, ulcer, pain at the shoulder, Every pain at your heart. Every waste pain. Eye disease. Short term. Long side. Astigmatism. Pain. Whatever sickness that has a name. Diabetes. I command you now. In the name of Jesus. Out now. Get out now. Yes. That pain at your leg is off. That pain at your ear is over. That load that you have been upon is lifted up now. You will be light now. Somebody, you move as though there's a load. There's a weight upon you. you. The weight has been taken away. That pain is gone. That ice disease is over now. Urinary tract infection is over. You, you, you have pains at your genitals. Those pains end here. I command every growth hiding in your body anywhere. I command those growths to dissolve now. Cancer, dry up now. You sickness and diseases, today I command you to be rolled away. Now receive your healing from the crown of your head to the sole of your foot. What you couldn't do before, receive strength to do it now. In the name of Jesus. Shout Jesus seven times. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Jesus. Be healed. Oh, celebrating for your healing. Celebrate.